everybody, uh, welcome back. I am Kathy, the First Responder Mom, and we are on part three of our Sanitation in a Disaster series. So in part one, we talked about the likelihood of losing water or wastewater for an extended period of time and what can happen. We had some case studies about what can really go wrong if we make wrong choices or set things up improperly. In part two, uh, we talked about all the, the decisions that your community, your neighbors, those around you that are trying to solve a, an immediate problem, they're going to make some really wrong decisions because they've made some assumptions about what they can do and cannot do during that long-term event. So um, in part three today, we're going to talk about solutions. I really do encourage you, if you're just jumping in with us now, welcome. I'm happy to have you here. But it's really important that you understand what we talked about in part one and part two. Because if you don't understand the why, um, it doesn't become as important to you in an event to really understand what's happening. So please uh, invite you to go back and, and check through part one and part two. But welcome to our solutions. I promised you in those other um, videos that it's not rocket science. It's not super expensive. What I'm going to give you are temporary solutions that will help you through that long-term event and um, they're pretty cost effective. In fact, a lot of the stuff you may even have just around the house. You just didn't realize how to put it together or how to use it properly. So let's talk solutions. What I want to go back to is that in part one, we talked about the hydrogen sulfide dangers when your P-traps dry up and the methane gases, the vermin and the insects that are going to cause you some issues if your P-traps dry up. So today, let's get that taken care of first off. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go find all the main lines to your sewer um, throughout your house uh, and remove the covers. So they'll look something like this. This is a drain club cover. It will be somewhere in like a utility room, a laundry room, any showers you have that don't have tubs attached to them, you stand on a drain that looks kind of like this. Sometimes they look like this, where they just sit down inside the pipe. They're really just a cover. You don't have a four inch pipe under there. It is blocking it, but this would have a two inch pipe or something in there and it just sits down in it. So all you have to do is remove that. This one would be a little trickier. It actually has holes where it's screwed into the floor. Um, what can happen if you've been in your house a long time and never removed them, if it was like a utility room where there was water seeping down into there, these are, screws are going to be rusted in place, tricky to remove. Also, if you've ever finished your basement or tiled it or did some work down there, the individuals who lay that tile or do those floors, they will grout right over the top of these things. And I've been told it takes 45 minutes to remove one of these several times. So don't do that to yourself, you know, in a stressful event or right after a stressful event. Make sure that you can easily remove all the drain covers throughout your home. So what you're going to do is you're going to go pull all the covers off of those and see what is the size of the pipe underneath. You're going to take a tape measure and measure the inside of the pipe. So it should be, I don't know, on average anywhere around two, two and a half inch, but every home is different. So you need to know the size of your pipes. Now once you've done that, you're going to go and get or pick up um, a supply that's really easy to find. It's called a test plug. Um, sometimes people call them drain plugs. Plumbers use them all the time when they're doing work on your home. They will go plug all your holes and check the pressure. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to put that down in there and it is a steel piece of metal, right? And it has a rubber gauge around it. Now when you go to the store, you can get these anywhere from half inch to eight inch. They come in a huge variety of sizes. They're a few bucks, anywhere from a few bucks to five bucks, depending on the size that you needed. Um, they're pretty easy to find at a home improvement store or a plumber supply store. Okay, test plugs or drain plugs are what they're called. So once you've removed this and measured your pipe, you're going to go buy however many of these you need. And in the event that there was ground shaking or some type of problem, I think any time that the city or someone says to you, you're not going to have water for an extended period of time, even a few days plus. Remember, we talked about in part one that hydrogen sulfide methane gases are real dangerous for your house. So what you could do is you just go take this, you drop it down in the pipe, and you twist and expand that rubber gauge, and it will protect you from those toxic fumes, from the vermin, if there was an earthquake or a landslide that are gonna to try to get into those broken pipes, um, from minor sewage backups. In part two, we talked about people that are using water to flush their toilets, they're pouring water into a system that's broken and doesn't have pressure. That is gonna come down from them and go to the person that's just a lower elevation from them. And that could be you. So that would be a minor sewage backup. Um, this will protect you from that. This won't protect you from a major sewage backup. If you're nearby something that was a catastrophic failure, that's not going to do it. But this will protect you from minor sewage backups. So you're going to go plug the hole. Just go around your house, find all your main lines to the sewer that are pipes, and you use these test plugs to, to plug the hole. Now, once you're done with that, you have a 
lot of main lines to the sewer, right? All your sinks, your tubs, all those areas, you just have to plug the hole. Go around, get in your kitchen, put the stopper down. Um, all your sinks and your bathrooms and your kitchens, just put the stoppers down. And if you think a kid's or someone's just gonna come lift those stoppers, just put a piece of duct tape on them, you don't need them. Just plug the hole. Uh, there are some awkward ones like your overflow valve in your tub where it's just a little slit where the water can drain. I love duct tape, go get some duct tape, put a piece of tape over it, plug the hole. Uh, you're just not going to have a situation now, or if you're being responsible during this event, you shouldn't you know, fill your sink with water that you carried in, do your dishes, and then drain it down that system. You're going to cause um, groundwater contamination, you're going to back up in other people's basements, you're going to have issues because that system doesn't work. So you can't really use your sink anymore for that stuff. Just plug the hole. Now there's another main line to the sewer that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, that is going to be your toilet. And what we're gonna do is create what's called a dry potty. So let's talk about that for just a second. To help with us, I have a sample that some local community college kids made for me. So here we go. We have the zombie toilet. <laughs> Thank you guys. Um, if you can't laugh at yourself, right? Who are you gonna laugh at? So, they made me a zombie toilet. Now, we're gonna take care of this before your zombie toilet, or your toilet looks like this. We're gonna take care of it. But what we're gonna do is, this is a main line to the sewer, and you have to plug it. The fumes can come through it, the vermin, insects, animals can come through it, if you have a dry system or a broken system. So, we're gonna create what's called a dry potty. There's a couple different ways to do that. First of all, you're gonna turn off the water at the wall. Don't um, leave that on. Even though you don't have water, and there's probably hardly any water pressure in the toilet, um, you don't, you know, if the city comes back and says, we're gonna turn your water back on, or the water's ready again, hooray, you wanna be in charge of when the, the water comes back in. So, turn the water off at the wall, right behind the toilet, there's a little silver lever, you turn it off. And then you're going to scoop all the water out of the tank, and all the water out of the bowl. This will be a completely dry potty. That's the name, dry potty. Um, and then you're gonna scrub it. This is going to be absolutely clean. I hope that what we learned in part one is those effects of when disease or illness breaks out in a disaster and your immune systems are lower are devastating. So we really, really gotta keep our house clean during this time. So you're gonna scrub it. It will not look like this. It will be shiny, bright, new, and dry. Um, once you've done that, you now need to plug the hole that's down in there. The, the official recommendation is that you take a racquetball um, to do that. Now a racquetball is great because it's rubber, but it's really dense rubber. So it can compact a little bit, but not a ton. And they say that what you do is you're going to grease the ball, because you've got to have a good seal. So in my potty kit, we're making the world's weirdest potty kit today. You needed test plugs already. That's your supply number one. Supply number two is racket balls. And then you need some grease. Now you could go get this from your kitchen. I didn't really want to do that for my kids. They have a little grease. You could also go out to your garage, use mechanics grease, whatever you got, but you're going to grease them all. And then what you do is you take it and you shove it down there as far as you can into that hole. You plug the hole really tight and really far. You got to prevent an animal from pushing against it to get up into your home. Um, now there's a couple issues with this. Uh, first of all, we have lots of different sizes of toilets nowadays, right? There's standard, there's elongated bowl, there's low flow, high flush, all kinds of fun things. So not this racquetball doesn't actually fit everybody's. Now it fits mine, it's a standard, um, but often you need a bigger ball. So what I would recommend you use is a lacrosse ball. This one's a little bit bigger, as you can see. It's a nice dense rubber. Please never use a tennis ball. It's made of paper, it's hollow, an animal can chew at it. It's just not gonna serve the right purpose. Never use open cell foam balls, like a Nerf ball, something like that. That won't work. Um, you need to use a dense rubber ball. If neither of these work, I would say go to a pet store where they have all kinds of dense rubber balls for chewing dogs and animals, creatures, and they have them in all kinds of sizes. So your project is, what ball fits my toilet. Now, here's what we did. So when I was doing all my research to figure out how to do this dry potty, I never like to give advice, I haven't tried. So I took the ball and I told my husband, go plug the hole, I'll take care of this. Is this true, is it gonna work? So he's pretty good sport, he walks back, he's doing his project, he's working on it, and he comes back after a little while and he says, uh, if I shove this down there, how am I getting it out, right? When the city comes back, says you're, you're, you're clear, the water's restored, what's he gonna do? Is he gonna stab a knife down there trying to get the ball dislodged? Um, so that is kind of 
often in a preparedness advice, sometimes you get untested or untrue information. So make sure you're doing good research and you're getting good information. So here's our solution to this. It's our, I love it. I call it our wonderful redneck solution. Don't be offended. Rednecks can solve any problem and they work really hard. So what you do is you take a tube sock. This is what my husband decided. You take a tube sock, you put the ball down into the toe of the tube sock all the way down and then you are still going to grease it you need a really good seal right so now i'm going to grease it and you shove it down there as far as you can and then once it's really lodged in there tight you just fold the little sock down in the, the mouth and just leave it and when the city comes and says your water's restored you simply just pull and dislodge but that will create a completely clean a completely dry no water even in the tank um, and it will prevent, it plugs that hole, so it will prevent the fumes and the vermin and the insects and minor sewage back up from coming into your home during that event. So that's how you plug the hole. That's the end of part three. In part four, we're going to talk about how to set up a sanitary bathroom. Now what do I do? I told you all your solutions were wrong and they're going to cause disease. So in part four, we're going to talk about um, how to set up that sanitary bathroom inside. So come back and visit us. We appreciate you coming by. Thanks.